say glare on it? Yeah, there you go. Go on. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, so let me do this. Hey, if there's anybody on, comment that you're on because uh, we can't see you. So I'm gonna make a comment of that. Comment if you're on because we can't see who's here. Oh, whoops, let me do that again. Talk to speak. Comment if you're here, because we can't see who's on. Hey, I know I just said that like four times, you guys, and I'm sorry, but it's, uh... Comment? Yeah. Insert comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on, guys. Here, I'll just do this a little simple way. Here we go. All right. So, oh, hey, what's up, Philip and John? Both of these guys are definitely, uh, definitely fans of nice guitars. So, it's here. It does exist. It's, it is real. It's not imaginary. <laughs> no, it's it's real. It, it exists. It's playable. Um, had plans on playing it a little bit for you guys, but uh, I will I will shoulder the blame for this one. I left the power cord for my amp behind. So uh, we could not find one in time for this particular event, but we are doing another one of these in a few more hours, so we'll see what happens then, uh, if we can rectify that or not. <clears throat> so, um, let's see, we got two people on. Hey, Phil and John, thanks for hanging in, you guys. I know all the, the three of us independently have talked about this guitar many, many, many times. And uh, not entirely sure who else is going to be on. There was probably 150 people that said they were uh, wanting to get on and check this out. Um, it's been a long time coming. So. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely has. So, you know, now that it's here, it's like the, the, the rush is over. But anyway, um, you guys, I want to introduce you to Brian Cole. He was uh, the, the, the hands behind the magic that brought the guitar to life, um, you know, once the, uh, the picture of it came to. So, um, tell us a little bit about you know what it was like to build this guitar, what it's made of, and uh, what are like unique features about it. Well, um, this was this, this was basically all just vision, and he came to me. I actually met him through a common friend um, at NAM, and he started talking to me about I have this idea for a guitar. Do you think it's doable? And I said, Yeah, let's get together and talk. And um, he came down to my shop and we penciled out some shapes, rough shapes, and then talked about his idea and the theory behind how it was built um, to best allow for the, the resonance, the sustain. And like, yeah, so we, we worked, we, we hashed back and forth for a while um, and then came up with the shape and just decided to make this ridiculously insane guitar um, and it's probably the only one I will ever make exactly like this because it was a pain in the ass but she's beautiful and um, she's so the the main body is black walnut uh, there are five layers so it's black walnut in the center we've got bloodwood following that and then a Clara walnut um, on the top and the back. Yeah, walk that up and show you guys. Give him a give him a close up view. So the guitar itself, there you know you see figured walnut top. But if you look at the sides, walnut, bloodwood, walnut, bloodwood again, walnut again. So five piece laminate body. This was kind of Brian's idea. Laminate neck. I was expecting maybe like a, <laughs> you know, like a, a three-piece neck or even a five-piece neck, but no. Brian comes on and says, "Hey, I can, I can outdo that." <laughs> and uh, okay, anyway. So we squeeze we squeeze a few extra layers in there. Um, the it, it is different than any other guitar that I've ever done and that I've seen. Um, it is. 
It is a through body, but it is not a through body. It is a three quarter through body. Um, the neck goes through the bridge and that's where it stops. So right about there. Um, so all, all of your, your tone from the fingerboard resonates all the way down through there. Um, and it was, it was a really cool, and that was actually Jeff's idea to, to at least go right. through the bridge. It's like, well, yeah. I don't, I hate through bodies because you see it at the other end and why do you really need it? You don't, you only need it through the bridge. Um, it's a lot harder to make, but the result is worth it. This, um, I wish we could plug it in for you right now, um, <laughs> but you guys will get to hear it in the not too distant future when just playing. So. That's right, that's right. Philip will actually get to see it. Oh, we got a comment. What's that, what's that comment, dude? I can't read that just, far away. Yeah, just, just peek around and see. It's Philip, isn't it? Yeah. What's he say? Single piece top and back or book matched? Book matched. Book, book match Clara Walnut Crotch um, to give it that nice uniform shape and curve oh, to it. Almost it, looks like a rib cage. That was it does look like a rib cage. Goes. Yes, it, it looks like a rib cage. It's it's kind of eerie, especially the significance of the guitar and yeah, it's yeah, it's really cool. And Jeff can go over later the 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 name we've decided for this guitar and and how he came to it. And I was on board. I'm like I. Again, it was a collaboration, but this was his vision, so... Yeah, yeah. What I had originally thought of, uh, and I'll share this because I don't think anybody's, you know, going to Skype the idea from me, um, but I, I always liked the idea of a neck through because I liked the way they played and I liked the way they sounded, but I thought it was ridiculous to just have this neck with body size glued onto it. I was like, how, how is that going to resonate? How does that make any difference at all with the body what it is other than aesthetics? So I thought, well, if you had, if you had a body, and this is what I brought to Brian, it's like if you had a body and you made like a dovetail, dovetail joint, and the neck would slide into it and it was bonded together, then it would all resonate together. Grab a clutch for me. Um, and so this ended up being kind of a hybrid of that, and uh, and it, it's it's awesome, it's incredible. Um, the neck heel is exactly like how a neck through guitar is. You can go as thin as you want. You know, so there's no there's no neck joint, there's no bolt there. Oh, hey, thanks, Phil. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, um, that was that, and so we knew that there was going to be some sort of, um, you know, some sort of laminate style body to it, um, because you know, like Brian said, he didn't want he didn't want the neck to show out of the back. It's just for aesthetics. So we ended up with, with this design, and I'll tell you guys, uh, even though I can't plug it in, I played a little bit, I just strung it up not 15 minutes ago. Um, it plays like butter. <laughs> this, is, this is the most, the most comfortable, most playable guitar I've probably ever had in my hands. And some of you folks out there have seen some very nice guitars that I've had made. I had a... Uh, well, a brand that starts with K that I won't mention. I yes, I know the brand. Yeah, I know the guy, and that's why I won't. Yeah, All right, you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, some of you guys saw my Aristides. That's also an, an amazing instrument. Um, but there's something about having a guitar, and, and this is definitely one of the reasons I really wanted to work with Brian. There's something about having a guitar in your hands that's made specifically for, for you as an individual. It's it's not just a guitar that you own. It becomes your guitar, and uh, my, my gratitude to this guy right here for bringing this guitar to life is absolutely endless. Um, well, and a, a perfect example, um, she's done, but Jeff was sitting over there newly on her a little while ago, and it's like, can you maybe take like a half a millimeter off of you know, an asymmetrical neck already, but he's like on on the on the low side. Can we take a little bit off? So, yeah. So tonight I'm gonna shave her down a little bit more because he uses an oil neck, so I don't have to go back and respray. Right. And and but that's it. It's it's made f for him. So I you know, I approach any any guitar like that. Oh, what's the radius on the fretboard, Philip? Oh, would don't even get me started on that. <laughs> Um, I won't tell you because I don't 
ever want to do it again. <laughs> um, it is not a standard radius um, fingerboard. It's compound, which is I'm, I'm sure with the, the root. But it's not a normal compound. Yeah. It's not the one you can go get on a, a strap or something. <laughs> no, he's like, can I go from this to this? And like, well, you can. <laughs> Why do you want to? He's like, oh, well, that, that's what I want. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I, I remember that phone call pretty clearly. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, scratching my head. Okay, I can do it. And it is so. I, I I will not I will not tell you what the radius is because I I don't want to do it. <laughs> so there you so there you have it. Um, now let's uh, let's you know I gotta I gotta throw out for for some of my parts and stuff. Um, you know, hard, oh. hardware wise, Hipshot hardware for the bridge and the tuners. Um, Jason at Hipshot has been taking care of me for. Uh, a couple of years. He's an amazing guy. They're an amazing company with amazing products. The stuff's insane. Absolutely insane. Um, DiMarzio pickups. You put a liquefier uh, here in the neck, and I think this was a D-Sonic uh, in the bridge. Um, it does have a kill switch, and it has a nifty little light on it, um, but I don't have a 9-volt battery to put in it right now. You guys are going to have to see that later. Um, but that lights up when I push on it and does cool stuff. And, uh, and DR strength. So, you know, thanks to absolutely no to Tony and uh, everybody at DR Rosa. Um, a big shout out to Tony and, and Rosa because they've, they've um, they're my go-tos now on, on all my instruments. So. That's right. So when you guys get a guitar made, you're going to get DR strings on it. Yep. Um, so let's, let's, let's tell them a little bit about the... Uh, That's about you. That and that. Because they, they go from the same piece of wood, right? Yeah, they are from the same piece of wood. So the inlay and the headstock, same piece of wood. What's that, what's that add up to? Well, that's a that is a quilted maple um, that I was holding on to for a long time, and I needed, I she needed an offset. I, I refer to her as she because I think all instruments are female. Um, that being right or wrong, um, in some people's eyes, but I do because um, they're just so sexy looking, and men are not. But anyway, um, I wanted to I wanted to give a contrast to the dark. All the other dark woods and the dark strings and everything and it was just a nice compliment to offset and i do have to say um the guys at hip shot the the two-tone is sick yeah 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 absolutely that's, sick that was a, that was another um but this <laughs> this is all um this is all jeff so he can explain that okay so um the people that have known me for a while you know know as as an artist as a guitar player um I, I earned at some point, and I'll tell you that story. I earned a nickname Voodoo Jeff, and it was comes from uh, way, way back when I was at GIT in like 1995. God, this flies like 15 years ago. Don't so, think about that. Don't, right, or, right. don't dwell on that too. <laughs> and so it was a it was a, a very Brazilian buddy of mine, um, not our mutual friend, not nah. Hoffa, but a, a, um, a, a very accomplished Brazilian guitar player. And in uh, one of the one of the, the group jam settings we were in after I, I played, um, just being funny, the guy says he says to me, "Watching your hands move is hypnotizing me like some kind of voodoo magic," and everyone, of course, in the room laughed, and uh, you know it was just for fun at the time. But because right, forty some odd, forty three percent of the students out there are foreign, and you can't pronounce their names, let alone remember them. <laughs> I ended up just being, you know, I'm going down the hall and be like, hey, voodoo guy. And it just turned into voodoo Jeff. So it's become an identity for me as a guitar player. Um, and that's generally kind of what I'm, I'm known by. This is, and this leads into the name of the guitar. This is called a bebe, um, which is kind of a, it's a voodoo symbol. Um, this particular one is Papa Legba. Legba is kind of the, um, he's kind of the muscle. He's kind of the, the poobah of the voodoo gods and Legba when you wish to speak to the gods of voodoo you go to Legba and you have to get his blessing to speak to them and for them to speak to you and with that and the symbolism in it we have decided to call this guitar the Legba um, because very much you know um, playing guitar is like prayer and when I care to pray to the gods of music, this is the instrument I'm going to pick up, and so it was just a perfect name. And uh, the that was lasered, right? Yes, that was lasered. So this is this is a piece of quilted maple that the um, um, 
the symbol was was laser burned into it. And we were gonna do something else, if I remember right, and we just left it. We were gonna we were actually gonna kind of do it deep and and um and do, it was do, something. Do yeah. a, well, we were gonna do a a glow in the dark resin inlay in the logo. That's right. That's um, right. but after more thought on it, um, I thought it would be more of a distraction. So people would be staring at that instead of actually just completely paying attention to what Jeff was doing on the guitar. So like, well, let's not do that. Let's let them see it, but not focus on it. Right. So right. yeah, and he, he sent me a picture of it, and I was just like, done. I'll go with that. It looked amazing. Um, we can talk a little bit about kind of some of the specifics uh, at this point and, and give you guys another kind of up close look. Um, you probably can't tell from there, just a five way switch and a volume knob. I don't run a tone knob because honestly I never turn it. It just takes up space on any of my other guitars. So we opted to not do that. And I alluded to earlier, it does have a cool kill switch so I can do all the cool bucket head and Tom Morello stuff. And you know, people go, how did he do that? And uh, it, well, it's because I now have a cool button where I push and it makes my guitar be quiet. Uh, sometimes I think I need one. I know a lot of people that need one. <laughs> um, pickup wise, I have no affiliation with DiMarzio other than in my heart. They're amazing pickups, they sound really good. I had this combination in another guitar and it was stunning, so we stuck with that. Um, tusk nut, right? What's that? Tusk? Yeah. Tusk nut, um, yeah, and that's and that's kind of that. So you guys have seen the front of it, and I put up some pictures of the back, and um, <clears throat> I don't know that the pictures really do justice to what what Brian's done with her. So, um, well, here, <laughs> I'll walk her over to the camera, and Brian, you're still in frame. Yeah, I will point to stuff. Okay, and. Uh, you guys can can kind of get a feel for it. What do we got going on here? Oh, where your fingers or where the strings go through. Um, we actually have a solid piece of ebony surrounding the string ferrules, uh, just to kind of set it off because we've got so much black and gold going on on the guitar. I thought, well, it'd be nice. Oh, I'm down here. <laughs> it'd be it'd be nice to continue that even on the back, even though you're not ever going to see it. Um, and again, same thing. With the cavity cover, that's bloodwood. It's not plastic. Um, I wanted again to continue on with the whole feel of the guitar. So it just, uh, it's, you know, it's part of you. It's, mm -hmm. it's a partner. I, I want it to be, you know, everything should be in sync and flow. So that's why I, di I do these extra little things because it ultimately. It, it, it makes it finishes the, it out. It makes the entire build complimentary. Yeah, that? it finishes yeah. it out. So if you guys you guys can take, I don't know how much you can see through here, you can see a little bit of the grain in that bloodwood. So we talked to you guys earlier and told you that you know the bloodwood was in the body. This is, in my opinion, this is just about the coup de gras right here. First one I've ever done, actually. Really? First bloodwood fingerboard. Yeah, bloodwood and it actually fingerboard. is awesome. Okay. So that's uh, that. Let's uh, tell them about the fret. Oh, we just went with a standard, non-standard gold fret. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, that's just, right. To, just again to set off the contrast. He's got the black strings, so I uh, just trying to marry everything up and, and make it cohesive and just flow. And it, I mean, I'm <laughs> I am biased, of course, but it's damn sexy. I, I just gotta say and, that. So, and I'll I'll throw this out there too. Um, Brian likes the frets because of the way they look. I like the frets um, for a couple of reasons. One, they are, thanks Phil, they are, um, the, the gold alloy frets have the lifespan of stainless, um, but the workability, and you can probably speak to this, of nickel. Yeah. Um, stainless frets, any luthier that I've ever spoken to has been like, oh my God, I'm going to have to buy new tools after every stainless They're guitar. They're a pain to work, they do dull tools, they're certain... There's certain tools that I have that when you buy those tools, they tell you do not use them on stainless because it does, it will kill their sharpness. Um, yes, they do last a long time, but they are, they're a pain to work with. Um, so I prefer nickel. These are actually, these, this, this is actually, these are really nice to work with and they are durable. So um, yeah. I'm probably, 
probably going to use them more in the future if I can talk other people into, into gold. <laughs> um, but it worked on this, it works so well. It's just amazing. If people are willing to, to, to pay for stainless, they should, they, be, sh able they to, should be able to paint yeah. for these. They're pretty comparable. They're very close. Very close. Um, inlay wise, you know, you guys, uh, have seen all of my guitars except my, you know, my off the shelf guitars. Um, I don't do, I don't do fretboard inlays. So we just got the, the, the double dot at the 12th fret, like every other guitar. Side dots. Yeah, that you can barely see because we went really, really light on those. Yep. So that's, uh, that's with that. Uh, I don't know, man. What else can we tell them? Um, well, I wish we could plug it in and, and show them, but yeah. um, they will see. It is, so it, it is a, it's heavy. it is heavy. Uh, and by the way, anybody that wants one of these later, um, I am going to be chambering them. Uh, you will not get, I'm sorry, um, Jeff and I talked about this, um, you will not get a five layer guitar. They're typically going to be three. I will, um, <laughs> I will do a couple fives if people are willing to pay the ridiculous amount of money more that it costs to do, um, because it is really difficult to do. Um, but I will be chambering them to lighten them up. The guitar actually is um, about an inch and five eighths thick at its fattest point, so it is thinner than a traditional electric. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's a solid piece of my, uh, of walnut. walnut. Yeah, solid. Right, it's at, heavy. right at the middle. It's it's heavy. Heavy. John, I don't know. It's a, it, I mean, it's not outrageous, um, but it's, it, but it's 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 less Paul weight. Yeah. It's pretty close to less Paul weight. Yeah. But the sustain on it and the resonation is it worth. Oh, it's nuts. Just get a good strap. Yeah. But I will be chambering future ones. This was the this is this is the first one. So I get off my knees when I feel. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, me too. So, Brian, let's uh, let's tell tell folks what they can expect if they if they want one. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. You know, if you guys want one of these, what do we got? Oh, sweet, Sonny and Kathy just jumped on. Nice. Sonny, okay, check this out, right? You, thanks for joining in, you guys. Um, we've been going for a little bit now, and uh, you guys definitely, I encourage you to watch the replay. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the guitar, and well, hang on, let me address this. Okay. Kathy was, uh, she just jumped on. Um, my mom's best friend growing up, and so, you know, I grew up with, with her and her daughters, you know, I called her Aunt Kathy my whole life. Uh, so it's really awesome to see her on. Sonny! Sonny Tyler, <laughs> um, Sonny and I worked together at Subway a million and a half years ago. He was the manager and hired me just to sling sandwiches. Sonny is the reason I ended up going to GIT. Really? Because Sonny also went to GIT. And of course, you know, back then, you saw their ads in the guitar magazines and it was like, oh my God, GIT, that's where like the guys that are pros go. And so, yeah, Sonny was like, oh yeah, I went and talked with yeah. I guess about, I don't know, a year and a half later, off I went. <laughs> I packed up all my crap and with whatever money I could shove it in my pockets and I, I moved thank, to... Thank uh, you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I moved to California. Oh, let's see, we got a comment. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's She's amazing. Um, so we were about to jump on to um, what people can expect. And we talked a little bit about what, what you guys could... Uh, could expect if you pick up the phone and you call Brian and say, hey, I want one of those. Um, like Brian said, it will be um, a three-piece or a three-layer three, a three -layer body, not five. Um, yeah. You guys will not get this inlay. You could probably talk him into doing uh, a custom inlay for you, but you will not get this one. Um, and I'm probably not. Was a seven-piece knife, right? Uh, we, yeah, we started at about seven. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, and so the standard model is going to come with probably a three piece neck. Yeah. Um, and, and we talked, we talked about what three, basically three combinations of wood. And yeah, the, can, there, there will be, there will be a few different options of wood. Um, I, I, I'm going to do contrasting tones of, we'll probably do, um, possibly an alder core with, um, mahogany. No, not mahogany. Sorry, the walnut. the Clara walnut on the front and the back, wow, that's um, amazing. or I will do a walnut body with uh, 
flamed or quilted maple on the top and back. There are going to be a couple other um, random ones that I throw out there for, for custom one-offs. Um, when I find, I am, um, I'm a wood hoarder and <laughs> I, I, I constantly am searching for, for awesome pieces of wood, one-offs. Um, and when I find them, I, unlike one of my friends that has a ridiculous stash of wood and will never make anything with them, I actually do want to make instruments with them. So I will offer those up, um, on one-offs, but they will be a very original instrument um, they will be a little more expensive, but they will be a one-off. So, um, there will be options. And on the next, um, I will have a few options for the woods, but I, I will try to stick with doing, um, maple and walnut and probably bloodwood as well in the neck. And I want to stick with the bloodwood fingerboards on most of them because yeah. it's just, yeah. it fits the guitar and it's, and like, like Jeff said, it's kind of like butter. So yeah, yeah, and we did. We talked about that about making something that's that's a standard on all of them. Um, and the bloodwood fingerboard, you don't see a lot of them. And yeah, there's probably a reason for it. Brian, Brian's probably got a few swears backlogged, um, but I don't know. I don't know because I've understand that bloodwood is maybe a little temperamental to work with. It's very splintery, but if you can get past that, it's an awesome wood, yeah. and, it, and it will it. As, as far as the fingerboard goes, it will hold it very, very well. But it's a pain to... If it's going to be done right, anything that's a pain to work with, you know it in the end it's going to last. So That's all right. That's all right. I've, I've cussed him a couple times on his decisions, but um, in, in the end this came out amazing. So Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was, it was definitely a, a work in progress for, for a while. And, and I'm sure we were both by our nails at different points for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but here we are, and uh, you know, the next time I see pretty much all of you guys, I will have this guitar with me, um, and it'll probably be glued to my hip forever. And Sonny, no, that is not true. You're actually a really great guitar player, and I'm glad to know you, and I'm glad to uh, have been steered that direction at your influence. So thanks for that. He put a smart comment. In his <laughs> so that is true. Um, what else, what else do they need to know? We are, and you guys, while you're on, we are going to be doing another one of these here in a couple hours after we, you know, kind of sit down and, and have some dinner and relax a little bit. Um, and uh, it's going to be a little bit more personal, less about the guitar. We're going to talk about, you know, what inspires Brian as, as a luthier and what inspires me um, as a guitar player and what I look for as far as tone and uh, playability and, you know, why Brian does the things that he does with the guitars. Um, so we, we, we don't want this one to stretch out too, too long because we can only talk about the guitar for so long. But I did want to bring something up that I think is really cool that's not directly related to this guitar. You have two pieces of wood that you showed me. One I knew about and one I did not. Yeah. Tell these, tell these guys what's right back there on the other side of the hall. Um, so... <laughs> he did something. Um, any of you that, that uh, know anything about... Um, Tone woods and and some of the most coveted woods, especially acoustic, because I I do both acoustic and electric. Um, Maybe more acoustic. Yeah, I, I do a lot of acoustics. <laughs> um, I have um, several pieces of the tree. Um, I'm currently making one for myself. After 15 years, I decided to make myself a guitar. And, and now, what is the tree for the people that aren't familiar? The tree is as it's is affectionately known in the, the luthier world um, is a very large Honduran mahogany tree that was felled in Belize back in the 60s laid on a farmer's ranch in a trench in the mud for years um, a guy found out about it somehow um, told somebody he went over talked to this negotiated with this farmer this rancher um, they could not drag it out because it was 10 feet across. Yep. Um, they quartered it and hauled out by mule. Um, half of it was shipped to uh, the Carolinas, half of it was shipped to California. Um, it was, then they went through sawmills and, and dried it. And when they started cutting it, they realized that it wasn't normal mahogany. Um, it's it looks cool. 90, 95% yeah. of the tree 
had some sort of figure in it. Quilt was the main. There's some flame that mainly quilted. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and they also is not known for that. No, and they also noticed that it was significantly because I guess because it had been buried in the the mud, chemical reactions, it was significantly darker. Um, so a couple guys decided to make guitars out of it. Um, got their hands on some, and found out that it sounded very similar to Brazilian rosewood, which is one of the most coveted guitar woods in the world, because especially because you can't get it anymore. Right. Um, so but who 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 noteworthy has a guitar made out of? Okay, the tree? so there's one person that has um, a guitar made out of the tree that you guys might know, and the top on it is is Sitka spruce, but it's not. Just Sitka spruce, it's 3,000 year old Sitka spruce that was yeah. buried in a glacier. Um, I also have some of that wood, and I'm going to be making a tree guitar with that. But the person that actually has that guitar commented on it saying that he, he was quoted as saying that he did not realize that it was possible to make a perfect sounding guitar. Um, because of these woods, and obviously a good luthier, it, he said it sounds perfect. Um, that person is um, is a he's a decent guitarist. He does all right. He does all right. He's recorded some some, some songs. Some songs, yeah. Popular. So his name is Slash. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm building I'm gonna build two um, two of those guitars um, like Slash has with the three thousand year old tops, um, and those will be available at some point in the next year year and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we got to be though. We got to be clear. Those are like. Those are kind of collector, you know, kind of kind of guitarophile level builds. Those are not going to be something that your Joe average. They're going to be average price on one of those is about twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. So what do we got? Yeah. Oh, John's never heard of Slash. Yeah, I wouldn't figure. <laughs> All right. Um, Kathy asks her husband wants to know if it was kiln dried or air dried. Was that in reference to the mahogany? Or, or, or this. They did a kiln dry on everything. Okay. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, and we've kind of been sitting here talking about this guitar and guitars in general and woods and so forth. Do you guys out there have any questions? Um, things that you might have expected to learn or to know uh, about it um, that we can address here in this one? And like I said, we're going to be doing this again here in another couple of hours uh, to get a little bit more personal. And um, so, you know, there will be another opportunity for some questions then. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. thanks for tuning in, by the way. <laughs> yeah, again, you guys, thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, this has been really cool. And we, we were really kind of unrehearsed with this. We didn't even know what we were going to talk about until... We were sitting here on the couch and <laughs> went, okay, showtime. Oh, and by the way, if you need a nap, uh, I, I built this as well. That's 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 right. That's, <laughs> that's right. our that's our um, our table, a very expensive table for this guitar. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. That's that's the marketing plug. Yeah. For uh, for ocean amplifiers. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, you can get one of those too. And this is not like somebody else's amp in Brian's box. This is like Brian made the amp. Point to point soldered everything by yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was Philip asking? Hey, it's a good question. Is the bridge bolted to the body or neck through? Both. Yes. <laughs> it is both. It is both. It is both. Um, that, and that's why I actually opted for the hip shot bridge because the bridge gives the option of being bolted straight to the body and the strings, you know, terminating at the bridge, or and this was this was definitely Brian's call. Um, it is drilled and routed, and there are inserts in the back, so the strings do in fact come through the body. I like through body on that, and up through. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, what do we got? Oh yeah, no kidding, right, Phil? But hey, you know what? If you're gonna see it, that means that means you gotta actually like you know come in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> These days, I think John's probably going to see it before you do. No, I'm kidding. I'm just teasing, man. I'm teasing. I know everybody's got their place and, and how they feel about the current state of things. <laughs> what do we got here? Oh, yeah, same question. So, yeah. Um, oh, John again. <laughs> John said he's on his way. Um, 
I will bring this up, uh, and if you guys can't tell, we're, we're starting to kind of wrap this up um, for a bit, but two, two of the people uh, participating have indeed asked about um, custom tellies. I, uh, yeah, I, I do those. Um, right. uh, actually, hold on, I'll grab it. Yeah. We have, we have example B for you guys. Um, we have a gopher, but yeah. That's fine. <laughs> so I do have one here. This just a single humbucker in it. Um, this is, you, you can't really, oh, you can see kind of the finish. You can't really see the grain of the wood, unfortunately, in this shot, but it's uh, tamo ash, like bubbly. I call her bubbles because it looks like water. And I did a, a crackle finish on it, which uh, is a trade secret and I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a solid mahogany body. Um, I will be doing chambered ones from now on because it's ridiculously heavy. It's a, it's, it is a Les Paul weight. But um, she's, I do these. And I, like I said, I do them chambered. So um, if you really want a thin line with the F hole, I can do it. I like them without it, but I'm not going to say no. Um, but you're going to get basically the same thing with an F hole in it. So, but yeah, this is, this is one of my babies. Brian says F those holes. Yeah, F those holes. <laughs> but there you go. So yeah, you, get, you know, for the, for the folks that have asked, um, that's that's kind of the standard. This guitar, and I don't know if we if we really went into detail on that. And I'll I'll tell this, you know, it's a hybrid now. body. It's this guitar kind. started literally started life with a template for a telly. We took the we took the telly template and sat in a what was that wood, bro? Was that pine? Uh, no mahogany actually, because I wasted a chunk of mahogany to figure it out. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, we 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 took the you know took the template of the telly and then just started shaving on it until all the contours and the shapes were right, and then by hand both of us I was here in the shop and we both took you know by hand files and just started carving away until all the contours were right, and we literally marked them out with pencils so that we they could be reproduced. Um, you know, once it was transferred to this body. So, yeah, this this is uh, this is in fact, um, and a, a, a uh, I guess a once removed relative of a tell. Yeah, I, it's. Uh, Something to ask. It is. I I took some. <laughs> what? Oh, Philip says he'll get his clean room bunny suit. This is Philip's one of one of the guys that that uh, sits down to learn stuff from me. And I hope I can teach it properly. But yeah, he's because COVID's been pretty much clamped us down up uh, in DFW. Um, we've been doing virtual for the past couple of months, so he's, he's poking, poking fun there. There's uh, a there's a tiny bit of Sunny says he missed the pickups, uh, Liquifier and D Sonic, Demarsco. There's a no. There's a there was a hint of influence on this guitar from um, the the Wolfgang, the original Wolfgang. Um, reason being is I love that shape, and um, a friend of mine who is um, a luthier at Gibson actually designed that guitar for Eddie, so it's kind of endeared to me. Um, so there's a little, it's very subtle, it's, it's somewhere over in this area, but the shape is, is a complete um, unique shape from any other. It does have hints of other guitars, but it's yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you guys can see that just sitting across the room, looking at it. You know, it is a single cutaway, so that is sort of Tele esque. Yes. But it does not look like a Tele guy. No. It does not. Look like no. It's got it's got um, bigger hips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. And it's a seven string, which we, if we didn't mention that, that's kind of apparent. oh. By the way, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And that's kind of what, what it was, you know, how it even got born was because that was, I think, one of the first things I said to Brian. I was like, hey, have you ever made a seven string telly? And, uh, and I said, no, but there's a first time for everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and so, yeah. And so that, that's what kind of sparked the conversation. We can get kind of more into that, um, you know, a little bit later when we do part two of this and, uh, and go. Um, but let me uh, check and make sure nobody's, we're not ignoring anybody. Okay, we got Sunny covered. Cool. Well, guys. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up for now. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah.
Yeah, definitely, you guys. Thanks for coming on and checking us out and sitting with us and hearing about the guitar. I'm really excited about it. And uh, we will uh, we'll be back on. Um, I don't know, just kind of keep your eyes peeled. I can't really give you guys a specific time. I wish I could because, you know, that would be the professional thing to do, but, you know. Uh, 7.38. Yeah, there we go. No, I have no, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, it should be sometime in the next couple hours if you guys will want to keep an eye out. Um, we're going to sit down uh, in, in a little bit more comfortable of a setting, you know, and, and not be so, uh, you know, rigid and cold like we've been at, of course. We're terrible. We may, yes, I know. I'm so. Have, I, I apologize. We're 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 being we, asses right now. We may or may not have a cup shot or two of rum in us. <laughs> Let's let <laughs> yeah. We need to do that to celebrate that she's done. Yes, um, absolutely. But, uh, but no, I, you guys. Again, like Brian said, thanks for thanks for tuning in and joining us. Um, I am completely honored to be able to to bring this guitar and show it to the world as a performer. Um, I'm, I was honored that you came to me to build it. So uh, that's why this worked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, um, we're going to wrap up. Last, let's see. What's... Oh, very cool. Yeah, Phil, definitely, man. Um, keep an eye out. Um, I'll try and post up uh, a little bit of, uh, ahead of time, give you guys maybe, you know, a half hour um, to, to, you know, advance notice that we're about to jump on. So, um, without uh, further blathering, <laughs> we're going to cut this one out. Um, I hope you know you guys got a chance to, to get a feel for the guitar and um, you know see that it is it is in fact it is in fact real it exists and, and is ready to come home with me. Um, I'm very excited about that. If I if I let him take her, yes, yeah. I'm I've yeah. kind of fallen in love. So, <laughs> so. all right, Brian, we did say we were gonna wrap this. We up. did. Let's do it. All right, you guys. Thanks. We will see you here Thank in a couple you. hours.